Hello everyone and welcome to VR Flight World. In this episode we're going to be talking about Microsoft Flight Simulation but with no internet connection. Um, so this is something I ran into recently because my internet provider decided that it was a good idea to cancel my internet early when I was doing a switch from one internet provider to another because I'm upgrading to uh, faster internet. So they cancelled it so I had no internet in between and of course this is right when Microsoft released Microsoft Flight Sim, so I had it downloaded and I got to try it for one day and then my internet stopped. So I had to find a workaround for this because I'm trying to get my internet back up, but right now I don't have internet, so I'm going to show you guys how you can run Microsoft Flight Simulation without internet. So as you can see, I have my internet is not connected. Connections are available, that's just because I have my mobile phone as a hotspot right now, but it's not connected to this computer. We are going to open up Microsoft Flight Simulation. I'm going to show you what I've done to make this work. Alright, so as you can see, I've loaded up into this screen here where you can press any key. This is one place I got stuck before. So I'd press a key and get stuck because my internet just stopped suddenly. So I didn't have an option to set anything up prior to this. It was kind of unexpected. So, so what I did was I connected my computer to my mobile phone I used the hotspot and actually activated it on my computer and that allowed me to get past the screen because otherwise it would I would hit any key and it would just restart this and I'd be back at the beginning of this and nothing would change so anyways I've got I got myself connected temporarily and then I was able to fix it so I'll show you how to fix it all right so you can see we made it to the the home screen here and uh, if you don't make it to this screen and you get stuck in that loop, or what happened to me also was um, I, I connect to my phone but I must not have had a good enough connection and it was asking me for a disk. It kept asking for the, me to put the disk in. What I've done though is you go to options here. This is what solved it for me. Maybe it'll work for you, maybe it won't. Go to general and of course you have to be connected to the internet to make this work. So whether you can temporarily connect or do this beforehand when you know you're going to be leaving the internet, go to data. And then right here it says online functionality. So you're going to turn that off. And when I turn that off, it seemed to fix the problem. Um, right now I have it on and it's not causing me an issue. So I'm going to leave it on because it's not causing an issue. But if you have that issue, it might be something to try. I would also try restarting your computer because it seems like this is meant to work offline as well. And I'll show you how it looks offline as well as online. So another thing you can do to improve your offline or online performance is actually to look at this uh, manual cache. Alright, so in here you can actually cache some areas. So for example, before I went offline I cached a few areas here to just try and see what would happen if I cached these areas. And uh, so what I mean by cache, it's, it's going to store this information on your computer rather than stream it live. So I was able to highlight this information and store it and it was this small area down there it was 1.9 megabytes and this one here is 769 megabytes so it's not a huge amount of data that you're having to store. So when I did do this there was a low, medium and high and this was low so I wonder if this is a lower resolution area versus other areas might be on the high setting. I'm not sure or maybe you can only cache on the low setting. I'm not sure yet, but this is something you could look at, especially if you're planning to be offline. Say you're on a laptop and you're, you're going traveling. I would probably cache some areas just so you have that extra detail in the areas that you're going. Um, it'll probably also speed things up as well. So now I'm going to show you guys what it looks like when I'm flying with no internet connection at all. So you're going to see the difference between internet connection and no internet connection. Of course, the video I'm going to show you is the one I first recorded. So I didn't have any time to do any tweaks to my settings. So my settings I believe are about medium and uh, it seems to be I can push my settings around the medium range but I can also I can push my graphics card a lot harder than my CPU because I kind of have a mix match of CPU and graphics card. And I'll get more into settings in future videos so stay tuned for that. Let's get into it. Alright so as you can tell we are inbound for Seattle. The bottom one is online, the top one is offline. So you can see there's not a huge difference when it comes to the two. Uh, there will be and if we got a little higher you'd probably see the difference but you can't really see it in this. But really this 
The offline version is completely usable. If you don't have internet, I think the offline version is completely acceptable. I'm very happy flying in the offline version right now. I'll be even more happy once I get online again. But right now, obviously due to my internet problem, that's not the case. But as you can see, it's, uh, it's pretty nice. So uh, we'll just finish this landing and that'll be it. Thanks again guys for watching my video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, I'm going to keep putting out new content, especially once my internet is back up. I'm very disappointed in the fact that we had that problem right now, but we did, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.